So what I'm going to talk about in this video is the important concept of motion in a circle. So let's say you have a ball attached with a string, right? And you rotate the ball in such a way that it makes a circle. It makes a circle like this. Now obviously there is a force in this string which is rotating this, this object, this ball. And the tension or the force in the string is in this direction so I'll call that F right this tension in the string is F so what's happening as the ball moves although it is moving at a constant speed but you, you see that since the direction is changing since the direction is changing as you can see here that first the direction was here then the direction was here and then the direction was here since the direction is changing what's happening there is a change in velocity there is a change in velocity. Although it is moving at a constant speed, but there is a change in velocity because of the direction. And you know that velocity is a vector quantity. So since there is a change in direction, so the velocity is changing. And since the velocity is changing, the object is accelerating. The object is accelerating. So I'm going to write here, the object is moving at a constant speed in a circle but what's happening it is accelerating but it is accelerating and why it is accelerating because the direction is changing and there is a change in velocity since there is a change in velocity because of the direction because of the direction and you know that since the velocity is speed in a particular direction so a change in either speed or direction of travel is a change in velocity so what is happening here there is a change in the direction of travel here so this object, although it is moving at a constant speed, it is accelerating and the acceleration is towards the center of the circle. The force is also towards the center of the circle. This is very, very important. I'm going to make a, another diagram here. So let's say this is an object which is moving in a circle, right? The force is towards the center of the circle, right? Remember that the force is always towards the center of the circle and this force is also known as the centripetal force I'm going to write here F is the centripetal force and the acceleration is also towards the center of the circle now your, your question would be that why the acceleration is towards the center although the velocity is at the tangent to the circle at every point and I'm going to answer that questions by using the vector head of head to tail rule right so you see at every instant the force is towards the center the acceleration is towards the center and the velocity is perpendicular to this force the velocity is perpendicular to this force at every instance and the direction is the di direction of uh, motion is also perpendicular to the force so now I'm going to derive that expression that will help you understand why the acceleration is towards the center of the circle and this is a very important thing that you should know. So you see that since the object is moving like this, I'm going to draw here, the object is, going, is moving like this. So at one instant, what's happening? This is the velocity, I'll call this velocity V1 and at the other instant, the velocity is V2, right? At one instant it is v1, at the other instant it is v2. At both instance, the instances the velocity is perpendicular to the force. So if I just you know enable this velocity, I'll take this vector. So this is v1, let's say this is v1. 
and since you require since the change in velocity is v2 minus v1 right since the change in velocity is v2 minus v1 and you know that acceleration is the rate of change of velocity so acceleration is the change in velocity over delta t so you require this this vector v2 minus v1 you require this vector v2 minus v1 so so this is v1 and this is v2 this one is v2 so what's happening here is that that this I'm going to take this here, this is V2 and this vector, this vector should be what? This vector should be V2 minus V1. Why? Because V1 plus V2 minus V1 is equivalent to V2. So you see the head to tail rule is being applied here. I'm going to draw it one another color. You see, this is the first vector. This is the second vector. And this is the resultant vector that is v2. So this is the vector that is causing the acceleration v2 minus v1, right? This vector. So this vector v2 minus v1, you see. And if you divide it by delta t, that is the acceleration. So you see that this vector v2 minus v1 is always in the direction of the force, always. So in this case, you see what happened. This was v1. This was v2 minus v1. And this was V2, if I extend it back, this was V2. So you see the direction of the acceleration is always perpendicular to the velocity and towards it is always in the direction of the force. And I think this is absolutely clear. So one more important thing is that since also the, according to Newton's second law, F is equal to MA. F is equal to MA. So the acceleration is always uh, in the same direction of the force. So this force, the centripetal force is the resultant force towards the center of the circle. And this force is known as the centripetal force. The force, the resultant force towards the center of the circle that causes the object to move is known as the centripetal force. Towards the center of the circle is known as the centripetal force. The acceleration is always in the direction of the of the force in the direction of this force that is towards the center of the circle and remember that the velocity is always perpendicular to this force and hence the accelerator. object is moving in a circle and the, the person is rotating this the let's say this ball in a circle what ha what happens if this force diminishes let's say this is the this is the object and it is moving in a circle. Let me draw it like this. It is moving in a circle like this, right? And since you know that this force is towards the center of the circle and the object's velocity is always perpendicular. So what happens if this force diminishes? Or in other words, this string breaks. Let's say the string was attached to this object. So what happens if this string breaks so when the string breaks what's going to happen is that since there is no force that is causing the object to move let's say i'm going to draw here since this force now there is no force now so what's going to happen the object is going to move in a velocity in the direction of that velocity the object is going to move in that that in the direction of that velocity it will move like this and it will keep moving because there is no force acting on the object it will keep moving as i've already told you in the newton's first law the object at rest will remain at rest an object moving in a straight line at a constant speed will keep moving in a straight line unless and until it is acted on by a resultant force so this object will move in a straight line right if the string breaks the string breaks here the string breaks here or this force diminishes.
right? So this is what happens. If the force is no longer there, the object will move in a straight line. One more thing that I want to discuss here in this video is that you know that the object would not move in a circle unless there is a centripetal force that is causing the object to move. So uh, as I've already told in the previous example that there was a tension in, this, in, the, in the string which caused the object to move in a circle. And let's say when you're traveling in a car, what happens? The friction between the tires and the road provides a centripetal force for the car to move in a circle, right? The friction between the tires and the road and this centripetal force is always towards the center of the circle, right? The bend that you're taking, right? So this is, let's say this is the bend. So the centripetal force is towards the center of the circle, right? And one more important thing uh, is that the satellites in orbit, right? Let's say this is, this is Earth. This is Earth and this is a satellite. And I'm going to discuss it in a simulation uh, just after a while what happens that there is a gravitational pull between the earth and the satellite and there's an action and reaction force there's an action and reaction force which is equal in magnitude but it is in the opposite direction and that centripetal force is provided by the gravitational pull between the earth and the satellite so the satellite moves around a circle moves around in a circle right and this is what happens that centripetal force is provided by the gravitational pull. And one more important thing here is the motion of the electrons. I'm going to write here the motion of the electrons in an atom. Around the nucleus. So what happens? Let's say you have this atom and you know that the the nucleus is positive it is made up of, of the protons and neutrons so since it's positively charged and the electrons are negatively charged and you know that electrons are orbiting in their respective shells and why are they orbiting in their respective shells because you see that there is a force of attraction between this positive nucleus and this electron and this force of attraction is the electrostatic force which is the centripetal force which is causing the electrons to move in a circle so now let's move towards the simulation which will show you about this motion of a satellite this simulation is about the earth revolving around the sun and uh, this is from university of colorado boulder and let me start the simulation i'm gonna show you the force of you know the centripetal force that is towards the center of the sun and these are the action reaction pair of forces and let me start this you see that this is the path that it is creating this the earth is creating this path and you see the number of days one complete revolution will make 365 days right one complete revolution will make 365 days and let me show you the direction of the velocity i've already told you that the velocity is perpendicular to the force so the velocity is you can see that this velocity is perpendicular to this centripetal force and uh, as this earth is revolving around the sun what happens what happens if if the force of gravity diminishes if the force of gravity diminishes what happens this object is going to move in a straight line it will not follow the circular path it will move in a straight line as you can see right it will move in a straight line so then show you another example. Let me show you the entire path that this earth makes around the sun. So this is the entire path that it is making. The velocity is tangential and the force is here. And uh, you see, this will be 365 days when the object, the, this, this earth will complete its revolution. That is one year, right? So here it, it went beyond that, right? Well, let me show you another example of the moon that is the moon revolving around the earth so there it goes right so here it goes the moon is revolving around the earth like this right and this is how the circular motion works right and if the gravity diminishes then this object is going this this moon is going to move in the straight line if if the gravity diminishes so uh, i hope you enjoyed the video
and the simulation and it gave you a good reasoning of the concepts uh, i've mostly discussed the qualitative reasoning uh, in my videos on a level i'll talk about a lot of mathematics as well on circular motion so stay tuned and keep watching my videos right thank you very much